Hello, everybody. This is Cody Bateman. Welcome to a brand new episode of Promptings with Cody B. We're all about acting on promptings here. We bring on guests each and every week to talk about how they act on their promptings and create influence in the world. Today, we have an incredible guest. His name is Larry Levine. He is the best-selling author of a book called Selling from the Heart. Think about that title, Selling from the Heart. He also has a podcast with the same name, Selling from the Heart. He's been a, a tenured sales coach for many, many years, been a professional salesperson over 30 years, and uh, he's brought his expertise to the coaching arena, speaks all over the world. Core message is selling from the heart. On the show, he and I talk a lot about this humble service to others and whatnot. But one of the key things that came out of, of this interview he and I talked about is that when you follow your promptings, you just need to act on them and go and, and do whatever it is you're supposed to do. He talks about being fired from a job, had no idea what he was going to do. And that's where he made the transition from being in sales to coaching people in sales, had no idea how to do it. And he just started doing it. He had no idea how to speak. He had no idea how to do a podcast. He had no idea how to write, but he just started doing it. And we talk a lot about the importance of sometimes in life, you are prompted to do things that you don't know how to do. And the key is to just start doing it. Larry Levine's one of the best. Come on back and listen to the interview here in just a second. And uh, just remember, when you have a prompting, even if it's difficult, it's time to act. You just act on it. If you're not very good at it at first, you just keep acting until you become good at it. And that's what we'll talk about with Larry Levine here in just a minute. Thanks, everybody. There he is, Larry Levine himself. How you doing, my friend? Hey, so awesome to see you, Cody. I'm doing well. How about yourself? Oh, I'm, I'm watching the stuff you're doing from afar through social media. Congratulations for all your success. I love seeing, uh, uh, I love seeing people like you who are humble servants succeeding the way you are. Congratulations. Great stuff. No, I, I, it's, it's been a, it's been a journey and, and thanks for being on the journey with me. It's, I always say it's, it's a roller coaster. It's an e-ticket ride, Cody. <laughs> That's right. Now, now I just dated myself. I said, it's an e-ticket ride. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Right behind your shoulder, you've got the selling from the heart book. And of course we, we want to make reference to that, to all of our listeners. Uh, you want a good read, whether you're in sales or not, it doesn't matter. Selling from the Heart is a great book for anybody in business, anybody in life to read. Obviously, it's super great for sales people trying to get in the sales arena, but it's great for anybody. So I highly recommend uh, Selling from the Heart. And, you know, I mean, uh, there's obvious tie-ins. We're all about helping people act on their promptings. And a, a prompting is an intuitive thought to reach out in kindness. Sure. And you're all about selling from the heart. Well, you can't sell from the heart unless you're continually reaching out in kindness. So those two go hand in hand. I, I want to talk, I want to start by, by talking about how you how you started this, this journey. You were in sales for a long time. You had a lot of success with sales. Then you kind of made the shift to where you started coaching other people in sales. And you always had this message of selling from the heart. How did all that get started for you? So, so it's interesting because you talk, you talk so well about promptings, Cody. And I always say, you know, in life we're dealt aha moments. And maybe my aha moment was actually a prompting. Yeah, and yeah. I'll, I'll I'll take you all back. So when I was 50 years old, I was fired. It was the first time ever, career adjusted, but at 50 years old, so I'm almost 58. So we're talking almost eight years ago, I was let go. Probably it was one of the lowest of low times I've ever had in my life because I'd never been I'd never been let go from a job before, and it was right then and there. It took me. I mean, I was crying literally, Cody. I was crying like a baby on this one because I didn't know what to do. I had to come home and tell my wife, Robin, 
that now I don't have a job. And I had to drive about 80 miles through Los Angeles traffic to do this. So by the time I come home, I share everything with my wife. And she goes, well, you know, maybe something happens for a reason. And I didn't know what that reason was. But she goes, let's just take a step back and reevaluate things. And it was right then I go, you know what, it, maybe it was my manhood, Cody, or whatever. I said, no, I just got to go right back and find a job. Mm -hmm. And that job was, you know, I could go right back to where I was at, different situation, different setting. But I came out of the office technology channel. I spent my whole entire career selling copiers in L.A. And it would have been real easy. And she goes, Larry, she goes, you know, if you go back to doing this, you're going right back to what you knew, what you grew up with. And I bet you six months, six months from now, you're going to, you're just going to go, why'd I do this? And I go, you know, it's easy because I knew it, but I get complacent. I got complacent and I was making really good money being complacent. So I started tapping my network and I just, I said, Hey, you know what? Can I just take a couple of weeks off and figure out what to do? And I'm sharing everyone the backstory because this is how this all happened it was all because of getting career adjusted. And I just reached out and I started reaching out inside my network. And I reached out to my near and dear friend who you've met, Cody, Daryl Amy. Mm -hmm. And I just started sharing with him what had happened. And he goes, time out. Maybe this is your time to shine. Bring what you did to the forefront. Help salespeople and sales leaders do what you did. And I had no idea, never coached anybody before, never publicly spoke in front of everyone before, never did a podcast, never wrote a book, hadn't done all of this, but I was willing to take a chance on myself. So let me ask you, when you were selling, like uh -huh. before you got let go and you were and you were a successful sales guy, I know, I know your story, you've had a lot yeah. of success selling uh, copy machines and different things over the years. When you were in the grind doing that, did it ever cross your mind? Did, was it a goal of yours to, to be a writer and a coach and all that kind of stuff? <laughs> no, zero, none, yeah, none, what, none whatsoever, because if you would have rewound, so let's just say you and I, Cody, are having this conversation, this would go back, say the beginning of 2015. So not too long ago, if you would have asked me fast forward to the fall of 2022, would you have a podcast? Would you have written a best-selling book? Would you be coaching and training and speaking all over the place? I'd say you're crazy. Yeah. Absolutely crazy. Did you but even I doubled like, down on myself and I figured it out? Like at the time where had you done much speaking back? Zero. Back? Zero. Speaking. Zero. I had never publicly spoke. So my my speaking was walking into you know offices and sitting down with executive decision makers and things like that, which would consist of less than a handful of people. That was it. I had never, and I mean never publicly spoken in front of anybody before of any substance until I started doing this. So let's talk about the first time you went on stage. But like what was that like? The first the first official <laughs> speech you gave in, in regards to sales. Oh, <laughs> okay. So, so I'll, so I'll tell you that. So it was, so let's see, I'm going back. So this would have been all of my life started to unravel. It would have been March, late February, early March of 2015. Okay. When all of this started to unravel and I found myself speaking the first time publicly in front of a, a group of people three weeks later. Wow. So, so, so it was, so yeah. here's the story. So, you know, as I started to tap my network and Daryl says, Hey, Larry, you need to go out and coach and train salespeople on what made you so successful in the office technology space. People need to hear your message. I go, yeah, you're crazy, but you know, I don't have a job. So it's, you know, I'll give it a shot. Right. Yeah. So Three weeks later, he has me speaking at an office technology event in Fort Lauderdale. And I go, Daryl, what do I speak about? I've, I've never done this before, right? I said, Dude, Cody, serious. I've ne I'd never publicly spoken. He goes, listen, he goes, tell your stories. Just tell stories, tell success stories of, you know, and I had a great tenure run between 40 and 50 and just how I transformed my career by integrating the power of social and relationship prospecting and building out networks and things like that. He goes, just tell success stories. He goes, by the way, he goes, 
people love stories. Yeah. He goes, you'll just raise the bar because, you know, most people haven't figured out that stories really sell when you're speaking. Yeah. So I go, by the way, Daryl, I'll do this, but how many people are going to be there? And he goes, I don't know, maybe four or 500. I go, dude, you're kidding me. He goes, <laughs> stop it. Right. He goes, just tell stories. Yeah. And I got up there for 45 minutes and told stories. And I'm just a big firm believer things happen for a reason. Sometimes there's the right people in the right place at the right time. And that's what happened. A couple people were in the audience and they came up afterwards and they said, hey, Larry, those were great stories. Are they true stories? I said, come on, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do any. I, I mean, they're all my stories. Yeah. I walk through all of them because I walk with integrity. I'm not going to fluff anything. And they go, well... I like what you said, by the way, can you coach and train my salespeople? Cody, I never done it before, but I said, right. Like great salespeople do. They say yes. And they'll figure it out later. I said, yes, sir. I'll coach and train your salespeople. And in two weeks I had to build out sales training and coaching. I pulled it off. You know, I, I love your story because, and I think it's important to talk about it on this show is we're all about acting on promptings. And, you know, the greatest promptings come from within. However, promptings come from all around you, too. Yeah. So uh, what I love about your story is that you got let go. You didn't know what you're going to do. You started reaching out to your network and talking to your peers and your friends and coworkers, whatever, uh, colleagues. And they started making, and I'm just kind of recapping, they sure. started suggesting things. Sometimes promptings come to us in the way of suggestions from others. And it, it kind of seems like that maybe how this started for you is that you reached out, people started saying, hey, you ought to try this or hey, you ought to try that. Is that kind of how it was? Did it seem like a, a you know, because when I can't remember who you said, the, the guy that told you, hey, you go, ought to go out and tell people. Daryl. Daryl. So when Daryl said that the first time, um, I mean, what was it like when he first said it? Had, you know, what was the emotion like when he said, when he suggested that? Well, so here, here's what's, here's what's interesting. This took me a long time to really come to grips with is he believed more in me than I believed in myself. But the reason why I say this is what else was I going to do? Right. I didn't have a job. Yeah. And, and, but the one thing that I did throughout my whole entire career is I always tried new things. Now, even in sales, when I had a job, I was always trying new things. I was always tweaking things here and tweaking things there and willing just to try it because what do I have to lose? If I tried it and it works, great. If I try it and it doesn't work, at least I learned something from it. But I was a point in my career at 50, I go, okay, well, what am I gonna do? Might as well try it. And I always say, you know, I always say, I didn't choose entrepreneurship. I was kind of like forced into it in a very positive, loving way. Yeah. But I go, you know what, what happens if I go there, I speak and I bomb, at least I did it. Right. Yeah. But I spoke and it turned into something. And then I go, Hey, what happens if I do it again? What happens if I do it again? What happens if I do it again? And I, that's what drove me into this. So as you started doing it, you, you got up, started telling stories. And I'm sure yeah. the next time you spoke, you told more stories. And yeah. At what point did the storytelling um, kind of kind of work into this this concept of selling from the heart? So at some point, selling from the heart became a headline for you. <laughs> at what point did that kind of happen? So I'll, I'll give you this is the whole backstory. This is a window into all of it, how all of this happened. So it was I started speaking and then right away, right place, right time. And I started to coach and train salespeople there in the office technology channel. Mm -hmm. And I went back to that channel because I knew it. Mm -hmm. The stories I was telling would resonate because there were stories inside the office technology channel. And they started to stick. And then I started to speak for what we call OEMs, right? Copier manufacturers and things like that. So the message rapidly started to expand. So from about the fall of 2015 to about the spring of 2017. I'm flying between Canada, the United States, 
in Australia, coaching and training copier salespeople, integrating social, how to build out networks and things like that. It was affording me, you know, to fly all over the place, but Cody, I wasn't having any fun. I really wasn't having any fun. And I'm a big believer that in this saying, a prophet's not welcome in their own backyard. Yeah. For sure. And it was raining true inside the office technology channel. I was literally inches away from hanging this all up. And I remember I was sitting in an event. I was getting ready to speak at an event in Las Vegas. Daryl was there with me. And I was having a really strong conversation with Daryl saying, I'm just, I'm not having fun. I got to go back to what I knew. I need to go back into sales. Hmm. And he goes, well, you know, you can do whatever you want. We're always going to be friends. But I said, we really need to, I need personally, I need to grow a message. I need to get out of this little niche market that I'm just been in for a long time. And I need to broaden my horizons. I want to start a podcast. And Daryl looks at me and he goes, uh, right. If you want to start a podcast, you're on your own on this one. And I go, no, serious. I want to start a podcast. I want you to be there with me. And he goes, eh, I'll do it only under one condition. You got to come up with a really cool name for this podcast, or you're again, you're flying solo on this. And literally, Cody, 30 seconds later, I'm at the Bellagio Hotel in Las Vegas, get ready to speak at an event. We're having this conversation. I said, Daryl, we're going to call this podcast Selling from the Heart. Wow. And this was beginning of April 2017. He goes, Where the heck did you come up with that? He goes, By the way, it's pure brilliance. Yeah. I go, that's how I carried myself in the office technology channel. I wore my emotions on my sleeves. I build deep, genuine relationships and I bring meaning and substance to everything that I do. And he goes, you're on to something. April 28th, 2017, we started our very first podcast. Again, wow. had no clue, right? But we just doubled down on the whole thing. In fact, Cody, you've been on the podcast. Wow. Yep. And uh, what was it? A year later, year and a half later, Selling from the Heart comes out. So the podcast came first. Podcast came first. I feel bad. I I I, I should have known that, but I did. I <laughs> thought the book came first, but the podcast no. came first. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, isn't that something? But so when you started the podcast, because uh -huh. keep in mind, you know, it's it's funny. Everybody says, "Well, Cody, you got to do a podcast," and so <laughs> I just okay, <laughs> you know, it's content, so I do it. I I don't consider myself any kind of pro podcaster host guy, but I, I just like to have conversations with people yeah. and, and hopefully it makes sense. Uh, was it that way for you when you like, how do you know how to do a podcast? I mean, how did you start? Do you, we had, do, we had no clue what we were doing. I just <laughs> said, Hey, let's just start a podcast. Yeah. Now keep in mind this. I mean, again, I'm taking everyone back five and a half plus years ago. I mean, people were podcasting, but not to the extent that people are podcasting yeah, today, right. yep. by no means. Yep. And so Daryl goes, what are we going to talk about? Literally, this is how it happened. We agreed to podcast. We're going to call it Selling from the Heart. We did the, I, I'm giving you the window, people, into how this whole Selling from the Heart started. We did the whole bumper music on GarageBand on our mics, I mean, on our Macs, excuse me. Yeah. And we paid some guy on Fiverr to do the intro, did it on a shoestring budget. And we got two snowball mics and just started having conversations between Daryl and I. Yeah. I mean, if you all go back and you listen to the first couple of podcasts, I'm embarrassed, but you got to start somewhere. But with yeah. consistency and discipline, we started to figure out how two people can function on a podcast. And then once we figured that out, we started bringing guests on the podcast. Yeah. And then I said, you know what, Daryl, we got to have a signature moment that will really kick conversation off. Because it's non-scripted. We just dive into things. Whatever happens, happens. But that's just who we are. I said, we just have to ask people, what does it mean to them to sell from the heart? And five and a half years later, I mean, we've heard some, we've heard some stories yeah. about what's it mean to sell from the heart. But yeah. that's really how this whole thing started. Well, you and I have shared the stage several times. In fact, you were a speaker at one of my events, uh -huh. uh, the Relationship Marketing event that we had several years ago it's interesting relationship marketing is a byproduct of what we're about we're about helping people act on their promptings and we taught people for years how to do that uh -huh. and as a result they became great relationship marketers because <laughs> they would act on promptings and they'd reach out in kindness and they would 
you know, uh, give for the sake of giving. They would serve for the sake of serving. We taught those philosophies. You teach those philosophies. And uh, so relationship marketing became kind of a byproduct. And we ended up doing some of those shows together. And uh, that's where I was able to see you speak. I, I think I saw you speak at, at a, at a, what, what are those events you guys, um, out, outbound? Outbound, or? yeah. I think I saw you speak first at one of those. And then I had you come and speak at our event. And I just, again, I love your stories. I love, you know, your servant heart. You do, you do have a servant heart. And that's kind of a common theme of all of the guests that I've had on this show is, is they're humble servants first. And, and you feel that it's like, I'm not impressed. I'm not impressed. Well, I should say this in a nicer way. I'm not as impressed by what you say, Larry, as I am about how you make me feel. And I think that's the key to your success is that you, it's how you make people feel. I mean, I keep looking at the, at, at your, at your book behind your shoulder <laughs> there selling from the heart. It truly is how you make people feel that's, that's important in life. And, you know, you do a great job of that. So the other thing that I noticed in, in this conversation that uh -huh. happened is, in fact, I'm reading a book right now. If I can find it, uh, I'll, <laughs> I'll pull it up. But common thing that we're talking about in this conversation right now is that if you have a prompting to start something, just start it. Yeah. And guess what? You're probably going to suck at it when you start, <laughs> you know? It's like you're 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 never again. I I refer uh, all the time. I refer to little children. You know they're 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 horrible at rolling over, and they try to roll over a thousand times before they can. They're horrible at walking. They fall over a thousand times before they can walk, et cetera, et cetera. So how are we to expect? You know I'm I, I ought to do a podcast. Well, you're probably going to suck at it for a while, but then you'll get better and better at it. But how many people? because of fear, never yep. take that first step. They're so afraid of looking bad that they won't take the first step. No, it, it, and it's so true because, um, you know, the stories, and, and I've heard you say this over and over about, you know, the, the stories that you tell yourself and they just start playing out over and over and over again. But so many people, whether you're in sales or insert whatever career you're doing, is so often we tell these stories of why we can't do something. Yeah. As opposed to stories of why we can do something because we have this, you know, we have fear, maybe there's some ego involved and things like that. And what happens if I fail, but you've all, you've all heard this thing about failing forward. That's, that's where I looked at it. And that's why I started all this. I go, what do I have to lose? Yeah. Exactly. I, I really, I mean, I had everything to gain because yeah. if it didn't work, it didn't work. I just go back to doing what I was used to doing. Yeah. But I just kept, I just kept figuring it out, and I just doubled down on myself, and I screwed up along the way. Yeah. And I had fear along the way, and sometimes fear paralyzed me. But I just had to keep plugging at it and doing it and doing it. And it's just the consistency and the discipline of just week in and week out. Right. I hate using the word grind because yeah. I started to like doing this, but I was just brought up with consistency, and I was brought up with discipline. And I'm just a habitual guy. And I just turned all this into habits. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Sorry, I was leaning over trying to find the book. I, I couldn't fill it in my bag. <laughs> so, uh, but the book is called Bird by Bird. And Interesting. I remember the, the, the lady who wrote it, but it's about how to, it, she, the book is about how to become a writer. So she's talking, and then she kind of applies it to doing things in life. So she's a famous writer herself. And she wrote this book called Bird by Bird. And uh, in the book, it talks a lot about what we're talking about. When you go to write something, yep. if, you're, if you're aspiring to, to write about anything, when you go to write something, what she says is it's important. What's important to do if you want to write an article or write a book or anything like that? The single most important thing to do is to write. And you just write. And, and you'd keep writing yep. and understand that the first draft of anything you write is always horrible. She says, just flat out. It's just, yep. you, you write to write. You don't try to perfect anything. You just get what's in here on paper. 
And that, and that part is so important. So take you as an example, you've got this central theme in your head about, uh, about serving from the heart or selling from the uh -huh. heart. Just write about it. And when you first start or, or just speak about it or just podcast about it or whatever it is, but just get it out of your head. Just what in this, I'm, I'm talking to all of our listeners right now, whatever you have in your head, get it out, write it down. And don't worry about what it's going to look like. And, and she talks about that, you know, first drafts are meant to suck. And then the second drafts from the first drafts, concepts and ideas come out. And then you second draft and it's not very yeah. good either. No, totally you great. Start to mold and shape. And that's the process of writing great fiction, writing great nonfiction. So with that little story in mind, let's talk about when you decided to sit down and write your book, selling. Oh, selling so, no. So, so this is good. There, there's a really great backstory to this. And if you allow me to share it, it's going to really bring full context to this whole thing because Keenan has the quote on the front of my book. Now Keenan's his last name, Jim's his first name, but he doesn't go by Jim. He goes by his last name, Keenan. Well, I still carry myself to this same way. Every great book that I read, I reach out to the author, whether that be through social platforms or I can find their email address and say, hey, you know what? You've written a really great book. This is what it's meant to me. I've done that forever and a day. This is decades now I've been doing this. Well, I had read a book called Not Taught. This goes back, this would have been the fall of 2015. Now, Keenan and I were connected on LinkedIn, but we didn't even know each, who any of, we didn't even know each other, but I read his book. I sent him a message, not expecting him to ever get back to me, Cody, but he got back to me. He goes, hey, thanks for reading my book. And so forth. my next comment back was, hey, you know, I'm just starting off in, in the entrepreneur world. Here's my number. Would you ever be open to a call? He said, sure. And I'm going to put some context to this because I really want people to key in on this. It was two weeks before Christmas, 2015. I have a conversation with Keenan, and he said, hey, tell me your backstory. And I shared my backstory. As it turned out, we had very similar backstories on how we became entrepreneurs through being career adjusted. And he asked me, you know, who's my target audience? Well, at that time, Cody, my target audience was people in the office technology channel. He goes, Larry, I'm going to tell you something. It's some advice that was given to me. You got to learn how to write. Now, Cody, I'd never really written anything before. And he goes, Larry, if you want to get noticed, you got to consistently write. He goes, I wrote every day for well over two years, seven days a week. And that's how I got noticed. Wow. If anything, he goes, just write to your target audience. So we had a couple discussions more about it in that same initial conversation. At the end of the conversation, I said, Keenan, I'm going to make a commitment to you that I will write once a week. He goes, don't make the commitment to me, make it to yourself. I go, well, fine, but I'm on a conversation with you. So I'm making it to myself and I'm making it to you. Cody, this was two weeks before Christmas, 2015. I have never backed down on that commitment. I have written an article every single week now since that conversation. Now in December will be seven years. That's every week. There's sometimes I've been on holiday. I haven't felt well. I really didn't want to write, but I, I just made that commitment and I won't break that commitment to myself and I won't break that commitment to Keenan. And it was from writing. Now keep in mind, this is, this is 2015. No podcast, no book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you went back to my first article, it was right to use your phrase, it sucked. It was bad. But I just every single week, I made that commitment to write. My writing became stronger. My stories became stronger. My thoughts became stronger. And then really, that's how this all started is now, I mean, now I'm writing my second book that I'm almost done with. And it's just become easier to write, but you got to start somewhere. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. You know, we have similar stories. Um, uh, my first book, Promptings, came out in 2008. 
And, you know, I had, I had started a direct sales company in 2003. By 2005, we debuted it in the marketplace. When you're running a direct sales startup, it's, it's mayhem. I yeah. mean, it's, it's you're in a different city every weekend. You're doing these events. You're teaching different courses. You're, you're trying to build up a company. You're building infrastructure. In the, I mean, it's crazy. It's just, it's, it's craziness. And through all of that, I was able to write a book and everybody kept asking how in the world were you able to write a, a, a I think it was 65,000 word book. How were you able to do that while you were, you know, building this business? And it's, it, I did exactly the same thing. <laughs> I made a commitment that, yep. and, and I, I wrote what I called an Eagle's view article once a week. And I told stories about people sending cards, acting on promptings, told their stories, told about what would happen, what we learned from it. Here's a tidbit of the week for acting on promptings. And, and I just did it week after week after week after week for three years. So when it came time to write the book, I had all these articles. Yep. Spot on. So now I had to take the articles and make it a book. But look at the content that I had. And again, it's just from consistent activity each and every week, which is which is what you did. And uh, yeah, I mean, there's valuable lessons to learn from that. Yeah, there, there's I, I tell you, there, there's no you know, everyone's looking for the secret, right? What's tell me the secret, right? What's the secret to success or what's the secret to, to how did you get to where you're at? But I'll tell you this, it's disciplined habits. Yeah, it's consistency. It's holding yourself accountable. It's it's the little things. In fact, um, I'm on this big, deep Napoleon Hill journey. Just yeah. it came from reading Three Feet from Gold. Now, after I read that, I'm going on this Napoleon Hill journey. What was really interesting is I read a book. I don't know if you've read this book, Mental Dynamite, Cody, but it was it got brought out of the archives through the Napoleon Hill Foundation. But it was a conversation between Napoleon Hill and Andrew Carnegie. And this conversation was done in 1908. So 114 years ago, wow. what was really interesting is Napoleon Hill's this struggling magazine writer who has an opportunity to interview Andrew Carnegie, who at the time was the wealthiest person in the world, because he had just sold Carnegie Steel to JP Morgan, which is now JP Morgan Chase. Yep. And so early on in the conversation, Napoleon Hill asks Andrew Carnegie this, and it ties into exactly what you were just saying. Napoleon Hill goes, hey, Mr. Carnegie, what made you so successful? It's early on in, the, in, the, in their conversation. Their whole conversation turned into this book. But Andrew Carnegie replies, and he goes, the key to my success was self-discipline and constructive habits. Wow. And isn't that interesting? Here we are, you're saying it we're talking about it in this conversation is if you want to succeed at something, hold yourself accountable, make a radical commitment to yourself, be disciplined about it and turn it into a habit and be radically, radically, radically consistent with it. It's really good stuff. We are listening to the one and only Larry Levine, best-selling author of selling from the heart also has a pat podcast with the same title selling from the heart. We're talking right now about uh, consistency, about creating good habits. One great habit to create is instead of listening to the news on the radio while you're driving, download a good podcast and listen to uh, listen to that. A great podcast is Selling from the Heart. Uh, we bring some information up on the screen here to share with you where you can get access to Selling from the Heart. Also access to Selling from the Heart, the book by Larry Levine. Uh, listen, if it wasn't for my ability to read, for my library, reading is the biggest, it, it's the most effective for me. And, and I, I like to listen to podcasts. I do a podcast. I, I But I'm not, audio is not my first thing. Nope, neither with me, zero it, with me. You know, reading really, reading really is what, penetrates with me and it, it just in brands it, it's branded on my brain when I read so so I'm a big time reader I have a huge library I'm consistently reading a personal development book uh, that's been a habit since I was 15 years old and so it, it's just consistency of doing that 
the challenge that I've had and just, uh, you know, just uh, being transparent is because I'm such a reader, a lot of times I don't think to listen to positivity, you know, listen to it or do audio. So I would get in the habit of when I travel to maybe listen to a news uh -huh. or to, a, you know, some <laughs> kind of talk show that has <laughs> negative stuff in it. Because it's easy. You just turn the radio on. It's there. You yeah. just, you know, you're driving, you're bored. So you listen to it. So I had to learn that it was easy for me to break into a bad habit because I was so focused on reading. And I, I thought for a long time, well, reading is how I take it. That's what I'm going to focus on. So I've had to discipline myself to make sure that I download podcasts uh, of my choosing and make sure that th that's what I'm listening to when I drive in the car. So <clears throat> I don't know if anybody else struggles with those kind of things. Even when we think we're being positive, that negativity has a way of creeping in on you yep. in so many different ways, especially today. In fact, I, I want to uh, have you speak to that. You know, what kind of things can people do to avoid the negativity? And I'm talking to positive people. You know, negative people, you know, that's a whole nother podcast to do. But the people listening to here are primarily positive people. But there's a warning to positive people to yeah. not allow negativity to creep in. How do you how how do you do that? So, so it's interesting. Um, a couple things is first of all, I lay off the news. Yeah. Is right. I mean, literally, I do not watch the news. Yeah. Don't pay don't attention either. to the news. Yeah. I have like my circle of friends that say, Hey, Larry, did you hear about what's happening? So and so I, go, I have no idea what you're talking yeah. about. They go, Come on, man. I go, No, seriously, I don't watch the news. We, I think, you know, regardless positive or negative, we have, we make a conscious choice of what we listen to and what we pay attention to. And I chose this is years ago at the onset of the pandemic, is I made a constant conscious choice no news i don't engage in negative conversations the minute i okay. the minute you know if i'm around a circle of people that start engaging in negative conversation i just ed, exit stage right or i just you know change the conversation really quick um i read positivity right i try to read a wide variety of books from leadership to spiritual books i really don't read any sales books anymore unless you know, they're from guests who want to come on the podcast because yeah, yeah. I have to read those books. Yeah. But I try to fill my mind and stay focused on that. I'm all over social media. But what's really interesting is, again, this goes back to discipline. I really want people to key in on this is we have the ability to show up. We're in control of that. We're 100% in control of how we show up and what we pay attention to. And we have to be conscious of this and we have to hold ourselves accountable that if you're going down this negative road, you got to exit stage right yeah. or else you're going to get sucked down the rabbit hole real fast. Even you're right. I'll just bring up Facebook for an example, Cody. Oh, I'm on it. I'm on it, but I'm on it and I'm off of it pretty quick. Yeah. And what, it, what this has really opened my mind to is even sometimes my circle of friends, I go, I can't believe y'all are saying some of this stuff. Yeah. And so I think the big, the big key thing is feed your mind, feed your, lay off the news. Yeah. Totally lay off the news, be really sensitive to what you read. Right. I, and again, I find myself, sometimes I will go down that negativity spiral, especially the stories that I start conjuring up in my head. But what I'll do is I just flip the switch. I literally flip a switch in my head and go, I've caught myself. And that's just through my life coach and coaches that I have is they've worked, helped me. They go, the minute you start going down this road, you got to flip the switch yeah. and right. Recognize it and then turn that negative thought into positivity. And the other thing that I do is when I find myself and when I find myself going down these, these negativity traps, I'll go take a drive in my car. Mm -hmm. And when I take a drive in my car, I put on spiritual music in my car. No, I mean, no talk radio, no nothing. Okay. Even if it's five minutes and I drive around the block a time or two and people will think I'm nuts. But spiritual, something about just spiritual music yeah. cleanses my brain for a little bit, gets me refocused, and then I get back to what I was doing. 
Well, I think part of that too is just calming your mind. You know, a, a lot of modern day thought, thought uh, influencers on thought and different things and big time coaches and gurus and people that are out there. Everybody seems to talk about calming your mind and how important that is. You know, people talk about meditation and all these different things you can do. I'm with you. Spiritual music really helps me. You know, there's a vibration to certain types of music. And, and you know, I'm not, I'm not going to give you the smart guy sure. discussion about the vibration. There, there's someone like Joe, Joe Vital or, or Joe Dispenza can tell you that stuff. All I know is that I know when the vibrational energy is in the right place because you feel it. And so music's, music's huge for me for that. You've been to my events. We yeah. create own music for the events. I mean, music is a big thing to, to calm. You, you got, I don't yep. know if it's the older you get or what, but the older you get, man, you got to yep. calm your mind. You just got to calm your mind. It's just because there, I mean, th there's so many things that there's rapid fire things that happen every single day that's playing on our minds. Yeah. And we need to, we need to realize this and you're right. Maybe it comes with age, but there's no, I mean, I wasn't thinking like this 20 and 30 years ago, not to the extent that I am today. Yeah. No, no way. Yeah. Interesting. Good stuff. Larry Levine, you're, you're a class act, my brother. You do some great work out there. We appreciate all that you do. And uh, for all of you listening in, make sure you get a copy of Selling from the Heart or listen to the Selling from the Heart podcast. It's a great source of positivity for all of you. Uh, Larry, we always like to close each of these shows by just giving you the floor and just saying, look, any, any final words of wisdom from Larry Levine? The floor is yours. Oh, uh, no, I appreciate it. I, I would just leave everybody with something to think about. And I wish... I wish I would have thought about this years and years, and I'll just say decades ago. For those that are struggling or feel like they're at a point where they've hit a roadblock or something like that, go find a coach and go grab some mentors. And I share this because everybody can use a good coach and everybody can use a good couple mentors. And if I look back in my journey now, my journey in my 50s, the last almost eight years of my 50s. I've learned more about myself than in my 20s, 30s, 40s combined. Mm. And so I'm speaking, you know, right now to some of the people out there that might be younger than you and I, Cody. And I say, go find a coach, go find a mentor. If I would have learned this in my 20s, who knows what would have happened. Yeah. But life coaches and business coaches and mentors have helped me really fast track where I'm at, get my mind clear. If anything, I just leave everybody with this. It doesn't matter where you're at. It's not a sign of weakness. Go out and find a great coach, go out and find mentors, build a really great circle of influence because they do have the power to lift you up. I just wish I would have learned this earlier on in yeah. my career. Yeah. Myself as well, for sure. And there's a lot of great, uh, there's a lot of great people out there that can do that, provide that, you know, just uh, be around like-minded, yep. positive people, people that are more successful than you are, that can pull you up because they will. And I think that's, that's really important. And guess what? There's always somebody way more successful than you are. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll throw my, dude, I'll throw my hand up on that one and an yeah. amen on that. There's yeah. people way smarter than me. So no doubt about it. No doubt about it. Well, listen, Larry, thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure. Appreciate all that you do. And uh, all of you listening in it's, this is Larry Levine on the prompting show. We're here all about acting on promptings to reach out in kindness and in service to other people. As you act on the promptings, you, you gain what we call appreciation energy. That energy puts you in a different vibrational field where you can manifest the true potential that you have in life. When you follow people like Larry Levine, you hear the stories that inspire you to do just that. So thanks, Larry, for being with us. Thank you all. And we'll see you next week on another show. Take care, everybody.